chapters nineteen through twenty four of the second book of samuel from the young's literal translation this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by mark penfold chapter nineteen and it is declared to joab lo the king is weeping and mourning for absalom and the salvation on that day becometh mourning to all the people for the people hath heard on that day saying the king hath been grieved for his son and the people stealeth away on that day to go into the city as the people steal away who are ashamed in their fleeing in battle and the king hath covered his face yea the king crieth a loud voice my son absalom absalom my son my son and joab cometh in unto the king to the house and saith thou hast put to shame to-day the faces of all thy servants those delivering thy life to-day and the life of thy sons and of thy daughters and the life of thy wives and the life of thy concubines to love thine enemies and to hate those loving thee for thou hast declared to-day that thou hast no princes and servants for i have known to-day that if absalom were alive and all of us to-day dead that then it were right in thine eyes and now rise go out and speak unto the heart of thy servants for by jehovah i have sworn that thou art not going out there doth not lodge a man with thee to-night and this is worse for thee than all the evil that hath come upon thee from thy youth till now and the king riseth and sitteth in the gate and to all the people they have declared saying lo the king is sitting in the gate and all the people come in before the king and israel hath fled each to his tents and it cometh to pass all the people are contending through all the tribes of israel saying the king delivered us out of the hand of our enemies yea he himself delivered us out of the hand of the philistines and now he hath fled out of the land because of absalom and absalom who we anointed over us is dead in battle and now why are ye silent to bring back the king and king david sent unto zadok and unto abiathar the priests saying speak ye unto the elders of judah saying why are ye last to bring back the king unto his house and the word of all israel hath come unto the king unto his house my brethren ye are my bone and my flesh ye are and why are ye last to bring back the king and to amasa say ye art not thou my bone and my flesh thus doth god do to me and thus he doth add if thou art not head of the host before me all the days instead of joab and he inclineth the heart of all the men of judah as one man and they send unto the king turn back thou and all thy servants and the king turneth back and cometh in unto the jordan and judah hath come to gilgal to go to meet the king to bring the king over the jordan and shimei son of gera the benjamite who is from bahurim hasteth and cometh down with the men of judah to meet king david and a thousand men are with him from benjamin and zeba servant of the house of saul and his fifteen sons and his twenty servants with him and they have gone prosperously over the jordan before the king and passed over hath the ferry-boat to carry over the household of the king and to do that which is good in his eyes and shimei son of gera hath fallen before the king in his passing over into jordan and saith unto the king let not my lord impute to me iniquity neither do thou remember that which thy servant did perversely in the day that my lord the king went out from jerusalem for the king to set it unto his heart for thy servant hath known that i have sinned and lo i have come to-day first of all the house of joseph to go down and meet my lord the king and abishai son of zeruiah answereth and saith for this is not shimei put to death because he reviled the anointed of jehovah and david saith what to me and to you o sons of zeruiah that ye are to me to-day for an adversary to-day is any man put to death in israel for have i not known to-day that i am king over israel and the king saith unto shimei thou dost not die and the king sweareth to him and mephibosheth son of saul hath come down to meet the king and he prepared not his feet nor did he prepare his upper lip yea his garments he washed not even from the day of the going away of the king till the day that he came in peace 
and it cometh to pass when he hath come to jerusalem to meet the king that the king saith to him why didst thou not go with me mephibosheth and he saith my lord o king my servant deceived me for thy servant said i saddle for me the ass and ride on it and go with the king for thy servant is lame and he uttereth slander against thy servant unto my lord the king and my lord the king is as a messenger of god and do thou that which is good in thine eyes for all the house of my father have been nothing except men of death before my lord the king and thou dost set thy servant among those eating at thy table and what right have i any more even to cry any more unto the king and the king saith to him why dost thou speak any more of thy matters i have said thou and ziba share ye the field and mephibosheth saith unto the king yea the whole let him take after that my lord the king hath come in peace unto his house and barzillai the gileadite hath gone down from rogalim and passeth over the jordan with the king to send him away over the jordan and barzillai is very aged a son of eighty years and he hath sustained the king in his abiding in mahanaim for he is a very great man and the king saith unto barzillai pass thou over with me and i have sustained thee with me in jerusalem and barzillai saith unto the king how many are the days of the years of my life that i go up with the king to jerusalem a son of eighty years i am to-day do i know between good and evil doth thy servant taste that which i am eating and that which i drink do i hearken any more to the voice of singers and songstresses and why is thy servant any more for a burden unto my lord the king as a little thing thy servant doth pass over the jordan with the king and why doth the king recompense me this recompense let i pray thee thy servant turn back again and i die in mine own city near the burying-place of my father and of my mother and lo thy servant kimham let him pass over with my lord the king and do thou to him that which is good in thine eyes and the king saith with me doth kimham go over and i do to him that which is good in thine eyes yea all that thou dost fix on me i do to thee and all the people pass over the jordan and the king hath passed over and the king giveth a kiss to barzillai and blesseth him and he turneth back to his place and the king passeth over to gilgal and kimham hath passed over with him and all the people of judah and they bring over the king and also the half of the people of israel and lo all the men of israel are coming unto the king and they say unto the king wherefore have they stolen thee our brethren the men of judah and they bring the king and his household over the jordan and all the men of david with him and all the men of judah answer against the men of israel because the king is near unto us and why is this ye are displeased about this matter have we at all eaten of the king's substance a gift hath he lifted up to us and the men of israel answer the men of judah and say ten parts we have in the king and also in david more than you and wherefore have ye lightly esteemed us that our word hath not been first to bring back our king and the word of the men of judah is sharper than the word of the men of israel chapter twenty and there hath been called there a man of worthlessness and his name is sheba son of bichri a benjamite and he bloweth with a trumpet and saith we have no portion in david and we have no inheritance in the son of jesse each to his tents o israel and every man of israel goeth up from after david after sheba son of bichri and the men of judah have cleaved to their king from the jordan even unto jerusalem and david cometh in unto his house at jerusalem and the king taketh the ten women concubines whom he had left to keep the house and putteth them in a house of ward and sustaineth them and unto them he hath not gone in and they are shut up unto the day of their death in widowhood living and the king saith unto amasa call for me the men of judah in three days and thou stand here 
and Amasa goeth to call Judah, and tarrieth beyond the appointed time that he had appointed him. And David saith unto Abishai, Now doth Sheba son of Bigri do evil to us more than Absalom. Thou, take the servants of thy lord, and pursue after him, lest he have found for himself fenced cities, and deliver himself from our eye. And the men of Joab go out after him, and the Carathite, and the Pelathite, and all the mighty men and they go out from Jerusalem to pursue after Sheba son of Bichri. They are near the great stone that is in Gibeon, and Amasa hath gone before them, and Joab is girded. His long robe he hath put on him, and upon it a girdle. A sword is fastened upon his loins in its sheath, and he hath gone out, and it falleth. And Joab saith to Amasa, Art thou in peace, my brother? And the right hand of Joab layeth hold on the beard of Amasa to give a kiss to him and Amasa hath not been watchful of the sword that is in the hand of Joab, and he smiteth him with it unto the fifth rib, and sheddeth out his bowels to the earth, and he hath not repeated it to him, and he dieth. And Joab and Abishai his brother have pursued after Sheba son of Bichri. And a man hath stood by him, of the young men of Joab, and saith, He who hath delight in Joab, and he who is for David after Joab and Amasa is rolling himself in blood in the midst of the highway, and the man seeth that all the people have stood still, and he bringeth round Amasa out of the highway to the field, and casteth over him a garment, when he hath seen that every one who hath come by him hath stood still. When he hath been removed out of the highway, every man hath passed on after Joab to pursue after Sheba son of Bichri, and he passeth over through all the tribes of Israel to Abel, and to Beth Maaca, and to all the Barites, and they are assembled, and go in also after him. And they go in and lay siege against him in Abel of Beth Maaca, and cast up a mount against the city, and it standeth in a trench, and all the people who are with Joab are destroying, to cause the wall to fall. And a wise woman calleth out of the city, Hear, hear! Say, I pray you, unto Joab, Come near hither, and I speak unto thee. And he cometh near unto her, and the woman saith, Art thou Joab? And he saith, I am. And she saith to him, Hear the words of thy handmaid. And he saith, I am hearing. And she speaketh, saying, They spake often in former times, saying, Let them diligently ask at Abel, and so they finished. I am of the peaceable, faithful ones of Israel. Thou art seeking to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why dost thou swallow up the inheritance of Jehovah? And Joab answereth and saith, Far be it, far be it from me. I do not swallow up nor destroy. The matter is not so. For a man of the hill country of Ephraim, Sheba, son of Bichri his name, hath lifted up his hand against the king, against David. Give ye up him by himself, and I go away from the city. And the woman saith unto Joab, Lo, his head is cast unto thee over the wall. And the woman cometh unto all the people in her wisdom, and they cut off the head of Sheba, son of Bichri, and cast it unto Joab. And he bloweth with a trumpet, and they are scattered from the city, each to his tents. And Joab hath turned back to Jerusalem unto the king. And Joab is over all the host of Israel, and Benaiah son of Jehoiada is over the Carathite and over the Pelathite, and Adoram is over the tribute, and Jehoshaphat son of Ahilad is the remembrancer, and Sheva is scribe, and Zadok and Abiathar are priests, and also Ira the Jairite hath been minister to David. Chapter 21 and there is a famine in the days of David three years, year after year. And David seeketh the face of Jehovah, and Jehovah saith, For Saul and for the bloody house, because that he put to death the Gibeonites. And the king calleth for the Gibeonites, and saith unto them, As to the Gibeonites, they are not of the sons of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorite. And the sons of Israel had sworn to them, and Saul seeketh to smite them in his zeal for the sons of Israel and Judah. Yea, David saith unto the Gibeonites, What do I do for you? And with what do I make atonement? And bless ye the inheritance of Jehovah. 
and the gibeonites say to him we have no silver and gold by saul and by his house and we have no man to put to death in israel and he saith what ye are saying i do to you and they say unto the king the man who consumed us and who devised against us we have been destroyed from stationing ourselves in all the border of israel let there be given to us seven men of his sons and we have hanged them before jehovah in the height of saul the chosen of jehovah and the king saith i do give and the king hath pity on mephibosheth son of jonathan son of saul because of the oath of jehovah that is between them between david and jonathan son of saul and the king taketh the two sons of rizpah daughter of aiah whom she bore to saul armoni and mephibosheth and the five sons of michal daughter of saul whom she bare to adriel son of barzillai the maholathite and giveth them into the hand of the gibeonites and they hang them in the hill before jehovah and the seven fall together and they have been put to death in the days of harvest in the first days the commencement of barley harvest and rizpah daughter of aiah taketh the sackcloth and stretcheth it out for herself on the rock from the commencement of harvest till water hath been poured out upon them from the heavens and hath not suffered a fowl of the heavens to rest upon them by day or the beast of the field by night and it is declared to david that which rizpah daughter of aiah concubine of saul hath done and david goeth and taketh the bones of saul and the bones of jonathan his son from the possessors of jabesh gilead who had stolen them from the broad place of bethshan where the philistines hanged them in the day of the philistines smiting saul in gilboa and he bringeth up thence the bones of saul and the bones of jonathan his son and they gather the bones of those hanged and bury the bones of saul and of jonathan his son in the land of benjamin in zelah in the burying place of kish his father and do all that the king commanded and god is entreated for the land afterwards and again have the philistines war with israel and david goeth down and his servants with him and they fight with the philistines and david is wary and ishbi benob who is among the children of the giant the weight of his spear is three hundred shekels weight of brass and he is girded with a new one speaketh of smiting david and abishai son of zeruiah giveth help to him and smiteth the philistine and putteth him to death then swear the men of david to him saying thou dost not go out again with us to battle nor quench the lamp of israel and it cometh to pass afterwards that the battle is again in gob with the philistines then hath sibachai the hushathite smitten saph who is among the children of the giant and the battle is again in gob with the philistines and elhanan son of jaare oregim the bethlehemite smiteth a brother of goliath the gittite and the wood of his spear is like a beam of weavers and the battle is again in gath and there is a man of stature and the fingers of his hands are six and the toes of his feet are six twenty and four in number and he also hath been born to the giant and he reproacheth israel and smite him doth jonathan son of shemaiah brother of david these four have been born to the giant in gath and they fall by the hand of david and by the hand of his servants chapter twenty two and david speaketh to jehovah the words of this song in the day jehovah hath delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of saul and he saith jehovah is my rock and my bulwark and a deliverer to me my god is my rock i take refuge in him my shield and the horn of my salvation my high tower and my refuge my saviour from violence thou savest me the praised one i call jehovah and from mine enemies i am saved when the breakers of death compassed me the streams of the worthless terrify me the cords of sheol have surrounded me before me have been the snares of death in mine adversity i call jehovah and unto my god i call and he heareth from his temple my voice and my cry is in his ears and shake and tremble doth the earth foundations of the heavens are troubled and are shaken for he hath wrath gone up hath smoke by his nostrils and fire from his mouth devoureth brands have been kindled by it and he inclineth heaven and cometh down and thick darkness is under his feet 
and he rideth on a cherub and doth fly and is seen on the wings of the wind and he setteth darkness round about him tabernacles darkness of waters thick clouds of the skies from the brightness before him were brands of fire kindled thunder from the heavens doth jehovah and the most high giveth forth his voice and he sendeth forth arrows and scattereth them lightning and troubleth them and seen are the streams of the sea revealed are foundations of the world by the rebuke of jehovah from the breath of the spirit of his anger he sendeth from above he taketh me he draweth me out of many waters he delivereth me from my strong enemy from those hating me for they were stronger than i they are before me in a day of my calamity and jehovah is my support and he bringeth me out to a large place he draweth me out for he delighted in me jehovah recompenseth me according to my righteousness according to the cleanness of my hands he doth return to me for i have kept the ways of jehovah and have not done wickedly against my god for all his judgments are before me as to his statutes i turn not from them and i am perfect before him and i keep myself from mine iniquity and jehovah returneth to me according to my righteousness according to my cleanness before his eyes with the kind thou showest thyself kind with the perfect man thou showest thyself perfect with the pure thou showest thyself pure and with the perverse thou showest thyself a wrestler and the poor people thou dost save and thine eyes on the high causest to fall for thou art my lamp o jehovah and jehovah doth lighten my darkness for by thee i run a troop by my god i leap a wall god perfect is his way the saying of jehovah is tried a shield he is to all those trusting in him for who is god save jehovah and who a rock save our god god my bulwark my strength and he maketh perfect my way making my feet like hinds and on my high places causeth me to stand teaching my hands for battle and brought down was a bow of brass by mine arms and thou givest to me the shield of thy salvation and thy lowliness maketh me great thou enlargest my step under me and mine ankles have not slidden i pursue mine enemies and destroy them and i turn not till they are consumed and i consume them and smite them and they rise not and fall under my feet and thou girdest me with strength for battle thou causest my withstanders to bow under me and mine enemies thou givest to me the neck those hating me and i cut them off they look and there is no saviour unto jehovah and he hath not answered them and i beat them as dust of the earth as mire of the streets i beat them small i spread them out and thou dost deliver me from the strivings of my people thou placest me for a head of nations a people i have not known do serve me sons of a stranger feign obedience to me at the hearing of the ear they hearken to me sons of a stranger fade away and gird themselves by their close places jehovah liveth and blessed is my rock and exalted is my god the rock of my salvation god who is giving vengeance to me and bringing down peoples under me and bringing me forth from mine enemies yea above my withstanders thou raisest me up from a man of violence thou deliverest me therefore i confess thee o jehovah among nations and to thy name i sing praise magnifying the salvations of his king and doing loving kindness to his anointed to david and to his seed unto the age chapter twenty three and these are the last words of david the affirmation of david son of jesse and the affirmation of the man raised up concerning the anointed of the god of jacob and the sweetness of the songs of israel the spirit of jehovah hath spoken by me and his word is on my tongue he said the god of israel to me he spake the rock of israel he who is ruling over man is righteous he is ruling in the fear of god and as the light of morning he riseth a morning sun no clouds 
by the shining by the rain tender grass of the earth for not so is my house with god for a covenant age during he made with me arranged in all things and kept for all my salvation and all desire for he hath not caused it to spring up as to the worthless as a thorn driven away are all of them for not by hand are they taken and the man who cometh against them is filled with iron and the staff of a spear and with fire they are utterly burnt in the cessation these are the names of the mighty ones whom david hath sitting in the seat is the tachmonite head of the captains he is adino who hardened himself against eight hundred wounded at one time and after him is eleazar son of dodo son of ahohi of the three mighty men with david in their exposing themselves among the philistines they have been gathered there to battle and the men of israel go up he hath arisen and smiteth among the philistines till that his hand hath been wary and his hand cleaveth unto the sword and jehovah worketh a great salvation on that day and the people turn back after him only to strip off and after him is shammah son of agi the hararite and the philistines are gathered into a company and there is there a portion of the field full of lentils and the people hath fled from the presence of the philistines and he stationeth himself in the midst of the portion and delivereth it and smiteth the philistines and jehovah worketh a great salvation and three of the thirty heads go down and come unto the harvest unto david unto the cave of adullam and the company of the philistines are encamping in the valley of rephaim and david is then in a fortress and the station of the philistines is then in bethlehem and david longeth and saith <sighs> who doth give me a drink of the water of the well of bethlehem which is by the gate and the three mighty ones cleave through the camp of the philistines and draw water out of the well of bethlehem which is by the gate and take it up and bring in unto david and he was not willing to drink it and poureth it out to jehovah and saith far be it from me o jehovah to do this is it the blood of the men who are going with their lives and he was not willing to drink it these things did the three mighty ones and abishai brother of joab son of zeruiah he is head of three and he is lifting up his spear against three hundred wounded and he hath a name among three of the three is he not the honoured and he becometh their head and unto the first three he hath not come and benaiah son of jehoiada son of a man of valour great in deeds from kabziel he hath smitten two lion-like men of moab and he hath gone down and smitten the lion in the midst of the pit in a day of snow and he hath smitten the egyptian man a man of appearance and in the hand of the egyptian is a spear and he goeth down unto him with a rod and taketh violently away the spear out of the hand of the egyptian and slayeth him with his own spear these things hath benaiah son of jehoiada done and hath a name among three mighty of the thirty he is honoured and unto the three he came not and david setteth him over his guard asahel brother of joab is of the thirty elhanan son of dodo of bethlehem shammah the haradite elika the haradite helez the paltite ira son of ikesh the tekoite abiezer the anethathite mibunai the hushathite zalman the ahohite maharai the natophathite heleb son of baana the natophathite ittai son of ribai from gibeah of the sons of benjamin benaiah the parathonite hidai of the brooks of gaash abai alban the arbathite osmaveth the barhumite eliaba the shaalbanite of the sons of joshen jonathan shammah the hararite ahiam son of sharar the hararite Eliphalet son of Ahazbai, son of the Maachathite, Eliam, son of Ahithophel the Gilanite, Hezri the Carmelite, Paarai the Arbite, Egal, son of Nathan from Zobah, Bani the Gadite, Zelek the Ammonite, Naharai the Beerathite, bearer of the weapons of Joab, son of Zeruiah, Ira the Ithrite, Gareb the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite. 
in all thirty and seven chapter twenty five and the anger of jehovah addeth to burn against israel and an adversary moveth david about them saying go number israel and judah <laughs> and the king saith unto joab head of the host that is with him go to and fro i pray thee through all the tribes of israel from dan even unto beersheba and inspect ye the people and i have known the number of the people and joab saith unto the king yea jehovah thy god doth add unto the people as they are a hundred times and the eyes of my lord the king are seeing and my lord the king why is he desirous of this thing and the word of the king is severe towards joab and against the heads of the force and joab goeth out and the heads of the force from before the king to inspect the people even israel and they pass over the jordan and encamp in aroer on the right of the city that is in the midst of the brook of gad and unto jazer and they come in to gilead and unto the land of tatim Huchai, and they come in to dan jaan and round about unto zidon and they come in to the fortress of tyre and all the cities of the hivite and of the canaanite and go out unto the south of judah to beersheba and they go to and fro through all the land and come in at the end of nine months and twenty days to jerusalem and joab giveth the account of the inspection of the people unto the king and israel is eight hundred thousand men of valour drawing sword and the men of judah five hundred thousand men and the heart of david smiteth him after that he hath numbered the people and david saith unto jehovah i have sinned greatly in that which i have done and now o jehovah cause to pass away i pray thee the iniquity of thy servant for i have acted very foolishly and david riseth in the morning and the word of jehovah hath been unto gad the prophet seer of david saying go and thou hast spoken unto david thus said jehovah three i am lifting up for thee choose thee one of them and i do it to thee and gad cometh in unto david and declareth to him and saith to him do seven years of famine come in to thee in thy land or three months art thou fleeing before thine adversary and he pursuing thee or are three days pestilence in thy land now know and see what word i take back to him sending me and david saith unto gad i have great distress let us fall i pray thee into the hand of jehovah for many are his mercies and into the hand of man let me not fall and jehovah giveth a pestilence on israel from the morning even unto the time appointed and there die of the people from dan even unto beersheba seventy thousand men and the messenger putteth forth his hand to jerusalem to destroy it and jehovah repenteth concerning the evil and saith to the messenger who is destroying among the people enough now cease thy hand and the messenger of jehovah was near the threshing-floor of arana the jebusite and david speaketh unto jehovah when he seeth the messenger who is smiting among the people and saith lo i have sinned yea i have done perversely and these the flock what have they done <laughs> let i pray thee thy head be on me and on the house of my father <laughs> and gad cometh in unto david on that day and saith to him go up raise to jehovah an altar in the threshing-floor of arana the jebusite and david goeth up according to the word of gad as jehovah commanded and arana looketh and seeth the king and his servants passing over unto him and arana goeth out and boweth himself to the king his face to the earth and arana saith wherefore hath my lord the king come unto his servant and david saith to buy from thee the threshing-floor to build an altar to jehovah and the plague is restrained from the people and arana saith unto david 
let my lord the king take and cause to ascend that which is good in his eyes see the oxen for a burnt offering and the threshing instruments and the instruments of the oxen for wood the whole hath arana given as a king to a king and arana saith unto the king jehovah thy god doth accept thee and the king saith unto arana nay for i do surely buy from thee for a price and i do not cause to ascend to jehovah my god burnt offerings for naught and david buyeth the threshing-floor and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver and david buildeth there an altar to jehovah and causeth to ascend burnt offerings and peace offerings and jehovah is entreated for the land and the plague is restrained from israel the end of the second book of samuel from the young's literal translation of the bible recording by mark penfold